वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला माई नेम इज़ वी भास्कर एंड आई हैव बीन वर्किंग इन टैक्सेस इन दिस सेशन दिस सेशन वी विल डिस्कस जी एस टी रोड मैप टू इम्प्लीमेंटेशन दिस विल कंसिस्ट ऑफ थ्री पार्ट्स द फर्स्ट पार्ट विल बी अ बैकग्राउंड विच विल डिस्कस द इकॉनमी एंड एम्फोसाइज द नीड फॉर ग्रोथ द सेकेंड पार्ट विल डिस्कस द प्रजेंट टैक्सेशन स्ट्रक्चर एंड द प्रॉब्लम्स इन द प्रजेंट टैक्सेशन स्ट्रक्चर विथ हिंडर द ग्रोथ विच इज़ सो रिक्वायर्ड the third will discuss the need for the gst and how the gst will address these challenges to promote a vibrant economy see i thought i will raise seven questions the the manner of asking questions and answering sometimes becomes much simpler first question will be why is this topic important to me why am i listening to this that is the first question i am asking second is what is the present taxation system and what is wrong with it third is what is gst and what will it do fourth question is what will its be impact on state governments and the government of india fifth question is what are the other issues which are involved in gst implementation which government you see gst is a tax being levied there are other considerations being which come into gst also which people look at the uh, the political leadership looks at what are those issues and how are they handled sixth is what is the proposed gst legal and implementation framework what are the laws how is how is it going to be implemented the seventh is what are the implementation issues and what is the way forward here particularly i will cover issues relating uh, to the services sector especially telecom banking insurance railways and civil aviation see any change there will be problems so i am not saying that there are issues which need to be faced why is this topic important to me see india we are seen as a country which has launched 104 satellites into space just day before yesterday we did a uh, uh, south sark satellite we want to be a member of the united nations security council we want to <coughs> we are some of the richest men of the world in our we feel that we are a rich country i want to emphasize to you in the next 5 minutes we are a poor country we are a desperately poor country which has shown that we can at some times excel in the world now i i want to talk to you about growth rates see per capita nominal gdp <coughs> india as on 2015 numbers is 1600 dollars that is our per capita the richest country in the world has a per capita of 1 lakh dollars luxembourg just remember this now you see health indicators if i just want to brief see our life expectancy is one of the lowest in the world our hdi rank human development rank is one of the lowest our public expenditure on health is low our under 5 mortality rate is 49 which is a shame 49 our maternal mortality rate is 167 again which is a huge problem you are allowing 167 out of 1 lakh mothers to die at the time of birth basic point i am saying is we have a low per capita income we are we are <coughs> we are poor we don't have good health we don't have good education let us see 70 see i did a small calculation This is 2016 our population is 1.29 billion our present gdp is 2.28 trillion our per capita is 1767 i said how much should india grow at what rate so that it becomes per capita of 10000 dollars not 1 lakh dollars of luxembourg not 50000 of us today how much will it become 10000 dollars in 2030 that is 14 years from now for india to become in what i call a pathetic a a, a, a very suboptimal 10000 which is worse <coughs> than what most countries are today if you want to get 10000 what should our growth rate be <coughs> cap growth rate required per capita of 10000 which is less than 1/5 of us per capita today and only 2000 more than what is china today what should our growth rate be <coughs> can you guess 14% up 
थर्ड रेट 10,000 पर कैपिटा इन 2030 यू हैव टू ग्रो एट 14 परसेंट पर ईयर कैन यू इमेजिन द शॉक इट गिव्स यू एंड द नेक्स्ट इश्यू कैन यू डू एंड वी हैव दिस डेली आर्ग्यूमेंट्स इन डेली एंड द वर्ल्ड आई एम एफ से इंडिया इज कट द ग्रोथ फ्रॉम 7.2 पॉइंट टू टू सेवन पॉइंट वन प्लानिंग कमीशन वर्ल्ड बैंक से वर्ल्ड ग्रोथ रेट हैज सेवन पॉइंट सिक्स टू सेवन पॉइंट फोर आर बी आई से सेवन पॉइंट थ्री हाउ डज इट मैटर यू नीड फोर्टीन परसेंट दिस पॉइंट वन पॉइंट टू परसेंट इज ऑल बोगस द आर्ग्यूमेंट वी आर हैविंग अबाउट सेवन पॉइंट वन सेवन पॉइंट टू सेवन पॉइंट थ्री डजेंट मैटर बिकॉज इवन इफ यू डू फोर्टीन यू विल स्टिल बी अ पोअर इकोनॉमी इन ट्वेंटी थर्टी सो हिस्टोरिकली ग्रोथ रेट्स आई हैव एग्रीकल्चर इज ग्रोन एट टू परसेंट इंडस्ट्री इज ग्रोन एट नाइन परसेंट मैनुफैक्चरिंग एट टेन वी हैव नेवर रीच फोर्टीन गवर्नमेंट से इज दैट इंडस्ट्री एंड सर्विस विल ग्रो एट ट्वेल्व परसेंट ईच इफ ट्वेल्व परसेंट ईच इंडस्ट्री एंड सर्विस विल ग्रो अज्यूमिंग दैट गवर्नमेंट इज करेक्ट टू गेट फोर्टीन पॉइंट थ्री परसेंट ओवरऑल इकोनॉमिकल ग्रोथ हाउ मच विल एग्रीकल्चर हैव टू ग्रो एट मोर देन फिफ्टीन परसेंट एग्रीकल्चर हैज टू ग्रो इफ वी हैव टू गेट फोर्टीन पॉइंट थ्री परसेंट ग्रोथ रेट इफ वी हैव टू गेट टेन थाउजेंड पर कैपिटा which will make it one of the poorest countries of the world in 2030 will we go from a nation of young poor to a nation of old poor in 2030 also we have inequality in india the rich are getting richer the poor are getting poorer we are doing nothing about it nominal per capita of 10000 in 2030 are desirable even at 14% you will get only 10000 per capita is it a desirable cap uh, target for india who we say we are a world power we are a member of the security council we have launched 114 satellites is this a desirable target is it necessary what can and should you do this is where i propose to bring in moral of my story is public interest we cannot afford to tread the path of gradual calibrated consensus based reform for the last 50 years we are doing gradual calibrated consensus based everybody must be happy reform the time must <laughs> we have to be what i call a nation in a hurry we must accelerate our growth otherwise tomorrow with inequality increasing and poverty increasing you will not be sitting in this classroom there will be social unrest outside if they have unemployed and un- people with jobs uh, outside we must be in a nation in a hurry we must be willing to adapt change quicker vat implementation i was involved in vat implementation took 15 years gst implementation already taken 10 years you want to increase your growth rate gst will give you a growth rate our calculation show 1% federal reserve has published a report just last month they say you will get a growth rate of increase of 4% if you implement gst we need it you need to do it quickly so the public interest is that you must implement gst as quickly as possible otherwise we will be condemned to poverty in the nation what is the present tax so as i said we need gst because we need to accelerate the speed of the economic growth we need it fast people are asking for postponement you keep doing postponement you your grandchildren will be condemned to be as i said a 10000 dollar per capita lower middle income country in 2030 what is gst and what will it do before i come to gst i need to talk about taxes what kind of taxes because gst is a tax we need to talk about taxation tax the constitution divides taxes between center and states center is allocated some taxes states are allocated some taxes what are the taxes allocated to center which no not direct taxes the tax so no income tax non agricultural income tax agricultural income tax is state income tax customs central excise or service tax center state entity tax registration these are located to state now what is so unique about this and there is a concurrent list which does it have taxes the concurrent list the prior practical purpose does not have any taxes when the constitution was framed the founding fathers are very wise people what they said was i say if i can use the hindi term jo tera tera jo mera mera the taxes were divided such a way center got its share and the state got its share there was no commonality of taxation this has resulted in good relationships between the center and the state 
because there has been no dispute on taxes. What is going to happen in GST? For the first time since 70 years, the tax base is going to be merged. So, it will become Jo Tera or Jo Mera Hamara. When this Hamara comes in, what will be the relationship between center and states is an issue we will discuss when we come to the end. But see the fundamental difference. See, they say good neighbors make good fences. A family parts, they divide the house into two and this is yours, this is mine, the brothers live peacefully. But if you tell the brothers, no, no, you live together in the same house. Will they live? How will they live? That, that, that is something like GST. You are having a shared tax base between state. That is one of the reasons why telecoms is, in, is, is having problem with GST because the states are insisting you register with me also. Previously, BSNL used to register single point entry registration for service tax. Now, state saying I am having a share in your uh, uh, service tax. You come and do uh, Shashrang Namaskar or Dandam or Pranam to me in 29 different places. That is an issue for somebody like service provider, it creates an issue. It arises because the tax base has been shared between the two. I was trying to tell you what is wrong with the present taxation system. Before I say that, I must define four ver verbs, levy, collect, appropriate, allocate proceeds. Levy means what? Levy means that you are talking of charging section, levy means the law which gives you the right to levy the tax. Levy. Collect means who actually collects. Appropriate means I collect, but I may collect on his behalf. So I have to appropriate to him. And after he appropriates, professor, somebody else may tell him, no, no, the money you have got, you have to divide among some people. Now you look at this table. We, as I said, you need to look at the subject and the object of each verb. Who levies what? Who collects what? Levied, collected, appropriated and proceeds allocated by. See, there is a union, there is a tax which it collects, appropriates and keeps the proceeds with itself. These are called central cesses. It levies the cess by law, it collects the cess, it appropriates the cess for its own use and proceeds are allocated by government of India after it collects. Here you have a cess where <coughs> levied, collected, appropriated and allocated by finance commission. Income tax, service tax, customs, union government levies it, it collects it, it appropriates it and where the money should go is decided by the finance commission. Here the third one, you have union levying, union states collecting, states appropriating and states allocated. This is actually central sales tax, which is levied by the union but the union authorizes the state to collect and state collects and appropriates it. Then you have union levies collected by states, appropriated by states. This is stamp duty, union acts, but states collect. Last you have states levy, states collect, states appropriate. That is registration, stamp duty, etc. Now I try to explain this to you, but is this not confusing? One fellow levies, one fellow collects, another fellow appropriates. This is a huge mishmash of the taxation system. You have five different laws. In one law, you collect and you appropriate. In another law, he collects, you appropriate, he keeps. All these things are, <coughs> are problematic. This is one of the reasons why our taxation system is, 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 a, is creating inefficiencies because of stuff like this. Second is... Of course, the argument which uh, is given is, why did the foundation fathers give uh, taxes like this? There is a reason, the reason being tax efficiency, reason being collection efficiency, income tax is best collected by whom? Suppose income tax is collected by the sarpanj of the village, can he collect? No, just think, why will he not collect? Because sarpanj lives with the fellow next door. If you say you pay income tax, he said, no, no, my grandfather, my daughter wedding is there, I'll pay next time. He'll not pay. And this fellow cannot force. So income tax, tax should be collected at highest level as possible. Expenditure should be levied at as lowest level as possible. For that reason, these people, 
they made this distribution. But in operation, what is happening, huge problems are coming in the operation of the tax. We have a small direct tax base and see it is very easy to levy indirect tax, but it is very long to levy indirect taxes because indirect taxes are rig what is called a regressive. If I levy the rate, increase the rate of GST, the poor man pays, the rich man pays. If I increase the rate of income tax, the rich man only pays. So historically we have tried to increase, we have a small direct tax base and an indirect tax is uh, dominated in the past. These are numbers, you can't see much of it, but I just want you to show Direct taxes to GDP is 5.65, indirect taxes 4.62. Direct taxes has increased over the last 10 years. It needs to increase more against a GDP growth rate of 11%. Basically, I am trying to say is, if you look at buoyancy of taxes, buoyancy means when GDP growth rate increases, how much is the tax which grows. Indirect tax rate has a lower buoyancy, meaning when economy grows by 1 rupee, Tax should also grow by the same percentage, it is not growing. Why is it not growing? Because what is called efficiency of collection. Because the efficiency of collection is low. This is another reason why GST is being sought to be brought in. To improve the efficiency of collection without raising the rates has been a major challenge for government. And GST provides an opportunity to improve collection efficiency without Raising the rate at the same time reducing corruption. That is a major motive for introduction of GST. This is again, uh, I am talking of direct taxes here. Direct taxes are still large. I, why I am talking about direct taxes is at the end we will discuss. There is a strong linkage between GST and direct taxes. Can you guess how? <coughs> When GST is implemented, my theory is direct taxes will increase. So GST is indirect tax. We'll come to that later. That's why I've said growth of direct taxes is 13 percent. When so even though GST may not increase high, direct taxes may increase higher. We'll come to it. see the another issue is how is the revenue collected? How to collect progressively revenue? Direct taxes in developing countries, income tax started only in 1900s. England in 1914 was the most powerful empire in the world. The percentage of population that qualified for direct taxes was 7%. In India, what population percentage of population pay direct taxes? It's only 3%. 2.89% people pay taxes. US 43% pay taxes. This is what Mr. Modi and Mr. Jaitley are complaining. This is also a very valid fact. In India, we don't like paying taxes. It's a different matter you feel the taxes are going to fellows who eat the money and therefore we that. But our tax collection is poor, our tax efficiency is poor. How to attack this from? These are the problems with the current system. International comparison, tax GDP ratio, India is around 10%. You have Sweden at 50%, you have Euro area at 40, US, Israel at 40. We, our tax GDP should increase, but because we are a poor country, we cannot raise the rate. So what is our option? Raise the base. See, to, ra to raise taxes, increase taxes, there are three ways. Easiest way, raise the rate. Second way, widen the base. Third way, improve the efficiency. Raise the rate, widen the base, politically they are a problem. Because what happens is, our people are affected. So the minister or the government will not approve. The only way to do it is, improve the efficiency. However, so far what has happened, why do people don't want to improve efficiency? No, because if I am the commissioner of commercial tax, commercial tax, I improve efficiency, my weekly hafta will go down. So, my own hafta, so what happens is, I am not interested in improving efficiency. I may be, I am on a line of corrupt chain, from maybe from upstairs to downstairs. If I improve the efficiency, <coughs> my under the table income will come down. So will I improve? That is another reason why there has been always problem with implementation of taxation reform. The fellows who reform don't want to reform. GST is an opportunity to force them to reform. Can we spur a faster trajectory towards a progressive regime? 
are there any tangible benefits can be harnessed? G that is the question. And GST ha hand uh, improves the tax efficiency is my thesis to you. This is presently <coughs> union government charges customs, excise duty, yeah, what is called CVD and SAD. CVD is countervailing duty. SAD is called special additional duties on excise. The service tax, there is sustenance. These are levied by the union government, which will be merged into GST. State government, VAT, motor vehicle tax, passengers, LXT duty is also not being levied. Now, what's happening is I made this list. Of course, this is the ideal GST list. All these things should be inside, including LXT duty is not there, and state excise should not there. I'll come to the argument why these should be included. But except for these two, state are giving away entertainment tax, betting tax, luxury tax, entry tax. The present VAT system has got what is called cascading. See, to, if you want to compete with the Chinese in the Thailand market for making, shall we say, uh, the Chinese are expert at making everything, including, say, the Ganesh Murtis. Ganesh Murtis are imported from China into India. Suppose you want to compete with Ch the Chinese in marketing Ganesh Murtis in Thailand, which is called Indian market. Chinese, when they export their Ganesh Murtis, for all exports, they are given full refund of taxes. In India, there is still what is called CST, Central Sales Tax, which is not refunded on export. Then taxes paid in other states are not refunded in the state of export. So there is what is called cascading, which prevents efficiency of competition. Indian uh, industry is problem is created has a problem of competing with other states because their ex taxes are not removed at the time of export fully. Most taxes are removed. There is duty drawback. There is there is export uh, promotion, but some taxes still stick. So there is lack of efficiency. Then there is something called tax expenditures. As I said, CST continuance gives excess value to the tax. There is limited set off of taxation of services. Entry tax is not set off. So the product an Indian exporter exports is not competitive. He cannot compete with others. And if you cannot compete, you cannot have more manufacturing. You cannot have more jobs. You cannot have higher growth. There is, there, in the present system, you have differentiation between goods and services. There is a case which uh, went up to Supreme Court on whether the tomato is a vegetable or a fruit. Why? Because vegetable is classified one rate and fruit is classified another rate. They fought all the way to the Supreme Court. Uh, just last month, the Supreme Court order on what is the difference between a sandal and a chapel. Do you know the difference? I do not know. Supreme Court said that there is a difference between the sandal and a chapel because the rates are different. Sandal is one rate, rates, uh, chapel is one rate. So, because of this product differentiation, there is tax avoidance. And that creates a problem in the present system. Then, of course, you have also administered prices, drugs, fertilizer, diesel, etc. Capital goods are treated differently. When I buy a huge machine, the tax on that is not allowed to be set off immediately. That's a big problem for industries today. It's set off over a period of four or five years. So that creates problems. Then concessions are, uh, industrial concessions are being removed and not vertible goods continues. There is no VAT on imports. Today, what's happening is, some goods when imported are cheaper than domestically manufactured goods. It is the system where what is happening is you are favoring other countries over your own manufacturers because there is no VAT on imports. That follow imports, there is no VAT. There is one thing called a CVD and a SAD. But the SAD is 4%. The VAT is 12%. So there is a problem where domestic manufacturers are negatively favored at com compared to the outside fellows and that creates a problem. Then tax expenditures, by tax expenditures I mean exemptions. Look at the level of exemptions here. These are so that, uh, four, 13, 14 numbers. Customs duty exemptions 260,000. Excise duty 195,000. Income tax 40,000. Forget income tax. Custom duty 2,60,000 and excise duty 1,95,000 are the exemptions given. Do you know what is the collection of custom duty? 2,10,000. Exemption is more than the collection. This is a huge issue with the present taxation structure where we are collecting taxes, but who are the exemptions going to? 
all the big boys they are collecting exemptions so many exemptions that the tax collected is lower than the exemption these are all published documents but i have not framed this is available in the budget document it's, and they have a new name for it they don't want to say exemptions they call it uh, tax expenditures actually the word, it means this money i have given you i have waived it is it is concessions given but concession is a dirty word because you will get caught so they call it tax expenditures this tax expenditure is more than the collection as i said that how are you going to run a system which is going to give you go, collect good tax with good efficiency see trends in tax expenditure previously half the revenue collection is tax expenditure excise and customs more than the revenue collected and every year it is increasing what is why does it increase tax expenditure this is the best way to provide patronage political patronage so we need a system where these kind of things will not be possible i am moving towards the gst is a way gst does not allow for any exemptions any at all so this this is the disease which we are having the other disease which we are having presently is i don't know if you ever traveled by road uh, of course if you travel by road uh, in your personal car nothing happens if you travel in a lorry from uh, chennai to uh, uh, delhi the actual driving time is about 4 days it will take you 12 days why because every state border there are check post and that fellow will check your uh, goods because you are passing through and what happens is see suppose you go to say the odisha border at andhra side there will be check post within half a kilometer on the other side there is another check post so every border two check posts so there are four borders eight check posts each check post say four hours five hours there is huge drain on resources transportation issues transportation becomes expensive trade becomes problematic so this is the problem with the system i'm still in the problem of the system why our present taxation system is such a huge mess and then what happens is when you have this taxation system suppose you want to make an investment where will you make an investment where you will pay minimum tax not where it is a see classical economic theory says you must make investment where it is cheapest to produce but that is not there what in the present taxation system investment is made where the taxation system is most beneficial that is why what reliance has done in his jamnagar he has done what is called backward integration everything is produced one unit another unit another unit so there is no interstate taxation ideally speaking if you should have say a coal plant in madhya pradesh then a cement plant in chatisgarh where the materials are there but because interstate taxation is there there is inefficiency in production and they need to and that is causing again problem with manufacture so these are the problems with the present taxation system first is tax expenditure then lack of competitiveness road blocks on the roads uh, economy is dynamic is not dynamic this is the reason why and in corruption in the collection this is the reason why they said we will impose <coughs> we will now put goods and service tax now we'll come to what is gst and what will it do first thing the prom this is the promise of gst they say we will give you a harmonized national market that means all states 29 states and seven union territories become one market there will be no borders rate of tax will be the same across states that is the promise and if that is so then there will be no cheating no border control it will be it is a national market number 2 it will make manufacturing more competitive because there will be full refund on all taxes exports will become more competitive logistics will become more competitive and therefore manufacturing will grow jobs will grow you will improve ease of doing business it is much easier to do business under gst you can get a registration within 3 days under the gstn network so it will improve the ease of doing business then it will improve indirect and direct taxes enhance gdp by 1.7% that some national council of economic applied economic research has done study your gdp will grow up by 1.9 to 1.7 now as i said federal reserve is saying up to 
See, we remember my old numbers, we are arguing about 7% growth when we require 14% growth. We require these kind of numbers for which we require GST. And see the size of the market, the size of the market is so large, 1.2 point population is greater than US, Europe, Canada, Australia combined. That's the size of the market. US, Europe, Australia and Canada put together, Indian market is bigger. As far as states are concerned, we have 29 states, 7 union territories, 36. EU has only 28 members. We are larger in terms of physical integration, larger in terms of market. This is a huge experiment we are jumping into. Now, in the market, you must have what is called a uniform definition of a tax. See, GST is defined consumption type, production type or income type. These are three different types of GST. This basically means how you treat set off on capital good tax paid on capital goods. Suppose I import a power plant, 500 crores, no 500 crores, 100 megawatt plant, 500 crores. Tax on five will be about uh, say 20 uh, percent, uh, it will be 100 crores will be the tax. How should this tax be paid? In the production type GST, this tax is not allowed set off. In the income type, uh, uh, type GST, this tax is set off over a period of 5 years. In the consumption type GST, they will give you set off today. Today, someone like uh, Adani sets up a power plant of 5000 crores and then 10 percent is <coughs> 20 percent is 1000 crores the tax he has to pay. Immediately, they will give him that tax. That is called a consumption type GST. That is the GST which we are agreed to. Then it is also what is called origin based and destination based. Origin based means that you will tax exports and imports will not be taxed. Destination based means that you will tax imports and not, do not tax exports. We, are not, we have agreed for a destination based GST. And we do it based on invoices, subtraction based, based on invoices. This is the type of GST which we are having. Consumption type, destination based, invoice based. Why I am saying this is, some of the rich states like uh, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat, just last year they said, no, no, we have set up large industry because of this industry only we are making production items. So, you allow us to charge 1% on interstate trade so that we will recover the cost for our infrastructure. That goes into what is called a production based GST, not a consumption based GST. But those fellows wanted money, there was a huge debate, there was a huge delay, but finally they went to a consumption type GST. <coughs> and second thing about a harmonized GST will be, there should be no difference between goods and services. Whether it is a good or it is a service, I treat it the same, there should be no difference. Is this happening? We are going to come in the next session about is this real? This is actually if you want the GST, GDP growth rate to grow by 2 percent as per us and 4 percent as you must implement this type of GST. Are we implementing this type of GST? I will come to that in shortly. See, as I said, again, I am coming back to my old thing. We need to have high growth. To have high growth, you must have high manufacturing growth. To have high manufacturing growth, you must enhance competitiveness. Harmonize market, promote investment, improve infrastructure, implement labor reform, remove, improve investment in agriculture, remove this. GST, uh, previous please. GST will give you these three at one stroke. I now come to the fourth point in my discussion. What will be the impact on state governments and the government of India? See, I'm, this table is due to show how much is the contribution of state governments and central governments to what is called the GST pool, what is the union excise 1 lakh crores, out of 1 lakh crores, 42% uh, <coughs> given to state governments, so balance is so much. This is what the union government contributes to the GST, this is what the state governments contribute to the GST. I have added three more taxes, my favorite is we are not yet including electric duty, alcohol, real, real estate and entertainment tax in the GST, they are removed from GST. If they were included in the GST, then what happens is <coughs> the central government will be 24% uh, uh, and state government would be 76. 
but the present GST central government contributes 31 percent and state government contributes 69 percent of the taxes collected. 69 versus 31, central government is putting into the pool only union excise, cesses, service tax, only excise and service tax are being, income tax is not going, customs is not going, central, state governments are putting more. So, they are putting only 31 percent against 69. Ideally, <coughs> we should have put the election duty, alcohol, real property and entertainment tax also in which case central uh, state government would be more. Point is, <coughs> state governments are giving more to GST than central governments. Now, ideally speaking, this is what the GST should have done. Catalyze growth, improve competitiveness, exports, remove cascading, Increase tax buoyancy by widening brace, improving com compliance, boost make in India, reduce human interface. These are ideally speaking what it could have done, it should have done. Will it do? In view of the dilution in the GST structure, we will debate it subsequently. The political economy, interaction of political forces with tax frameworks. Politics, the process of balancing available results against the needs and demands of different interest groups. Generation of GST will affect dif groups differentially. Again, political economy, the ruling political structures use tax to directly further their interests, manage, divert of various groupings in an era of quality. So, it is a, remember GST is also a political instrument you are seeing. So, when you see delays, when you see other, you should see that there is politics at work in GST. This is an issue which is, this government has publicly said, it has said, that if I put 18 percent GST rates, a lot of people ask for single GST rate. They said if I put 18 percent GST rate, there will be what is called adverse distributional consequences. That means if I charge food grains, if I charge medicines, if I charge clothes at 18 percent, poor cannot pay. So, the government says even though a lot of people say put one rate, they say no, no, we can't. We must have a low rate of 5 percent. We will charge low rate there. So, this is an issue. <coughs> Common man will be affected by taxation or items of common consumption. Presently, food grains are not taxed or charged at low. I cannot charge at a high rate. <coughs> this, this central government's answer to people, including me, who have said, charge a uniform rate of 18 percent. Me and a lot of other people are arguing efficiency demands single rate. And the poor people whom you don't, you have to give benefit, you give through Aadhaar jam and uh, bank account you give them money to the extent of that like uh, our gas is being paid subsidy. subsidy that's ideally most efficient tax put a single rate and help the poor directly but this government doesn't want it they say no 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 we will charge different rates for different people their reasoning please i i'm not decrying the government is valid they say we don't want the poor to get affected but there are other ways to prevent the poor from affected and still keep the efficiency of the GST. That is not working. <coughs> then reporting, to, uh, then next issue is effect will be pronounced till growth picks up. The inflation effect, then reporting of two taxation authority. The other issue is what happens is when I said there is a shared common base between center and state. There is a base, jo hamara, jo tumara, hamara. In this Hamara, what is happening? There are about 160 countries in the world which have implemented GST. We are the only country in the world where two fellows are operating the tax. All the other countries, only one person operates the tax. Australia, Germany, the central government operates the tax and gives the state government its share. State government share just like common base is there. One fellow collects, so you have only one boss. New Zealand, it's a unitary country, single. In fact, in Quebec, in Canada, Canada is a, uh, it's a federation, there's a province called Fre Quebec, which has got large, strong French connection. They have very strong French identity. Quebec is, <coughs> is, has a strong uh, personality. So, when Canada, Ottawa said that I will collect the uh, GST for you, the Quebec said, no, 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 you can't collect, I will collect for you. So I will collect for ourselves, just like our states are doing. 
So see what has happened in Canada. The central government of Canada said, we want only 1% collecting, you collect ours also. So Quebec collects for itself and for the central government and passes to the central government. Other states in Canada, the central government collects and passes on. We are the only country in the world where the center and the states don't trust each other. They are saying, this fellow is saying, I will collect my share. This man is saying, I will collect my share. So both of them are going to pounce on the, on, on the taxpayer, including the BSNL. <coughs> and they say, one fellow will ask one question, one fellow will ask another question. You give one answer, he will give another answer. This is a huge issue in the, <coughs> in the uh, uh, present GST structure. The issue of, sing, it, the, it, this is called cross-empowerment, single tax collection agency. It is not there in our GST. Is it a good thing? I do not think it is a good thing. There should have been a single agency. But unfortunately, today, in fiscal the federal relations between in central government and states, the states do not trust the center. So because of this lack of trust, each fellow is saying, I, this is mine, this is mine. And then the, you are having two bosses. I, I will come to that in the next session. Is going to affect the efficiency of the, 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 the. What should we do about it? That we'll discuss when we come to the next session.